Alcatraz, the famous island off the shores of San Francisco, California that once contained some of the most infamous prisoners. After it closed in 1963, no one could agree on what to do with it, so it went unused for years. Native Americans wanted to turn the island into a cultural and educational center, but their ideas were ignored. So on November 20th, 1969, they took matters into their own hands, broke into the prison, and claimed the island for the Indians of all tribes. They saw it as a way to take back some of the land that was stolen from them years ago. The activists said they had no problem living on an abandoned island without clean water, since that's what they were used to on the government reservations. President Nixon didn't want to force them off, so the island soon filled up with hundreds of people. A local government was established on Alcatraz, along with kitchens and schools. Eventually, for a number of reasons, everyone left the island. But even though the occupation only lasted for 19 months, it sent a big message to the rest of the country and energized Native American activists. They saw Alcatraz as a symbol of how the U.S. government had long ignored the needs of the Native American population. And this country's history with Native Americans includes not just indifference, but also suffering and betrayal, even as attempts were made by some to find a peaceful resolution that would have benefited everyone. This might come as a shock to those who think of Thanksgiving and its happy images of Native Americans sharing meals with pilgrims. Hold! What's wrong with the first Thanksgiving? You don't know. Oh, no, no, I'm not one of the teachers here. I'm just a parent helping out, you know, budget cuts and all that. The Thanksgiving stories we usually hear tend to leave out all the parts that came after the celebration of harvest with the pilgrims and the Wampanoag tribe. Put the turkey down, like we practiced. Like what? Well, like how more settlers arrived, took up more land, spread disease, and went to war with that same tribe. Well, that is just terrible. I, I don't remember learning about that in school. Well, because they tend to gloss over a lot of the bad stuff. Oh, crap. I'm, go I'm gonna have to rewrite the ending to the play. Good luck. I've got it. We'll just do a play about modern Native Americans. Because everything's fine now, right? Well... Not exactly. Gave I got it. it, it it'll be a, a great business success story. Did you know the world's largest casino is a tribal one? Yeah, it's the Windstar Casino in Oklahoma. Yeah, we'll just we'll just do a children's school play about casinos. Well, if you did, it'd have to look like this. Our casino has been pulling in a lot of cash. We have thirty-two billion. That sounds great. Well, sure, until you find out that most tribes don't even have casinos or the access to build them. And they are expensive to build and maintain, so most tribes are in debt because of them. All their monies are gone. Well, what, what, what about all the jobs they create? Hundreds of thousands of employees have worked in tribal casinos. Perfect. Most of those jobs are low-paying, and a lot of them don't go to Native Americans. Oh, good heavens. Bottom line is poverty still affects Native Americans at an alarming rate. You know what? I think we should just cancel the play. This is all way more complicated than I thought. Yeah, it's complicated, all right. Yeah. Wait. Where are you going? Starbucks. This video is inspired by our PBS series, Reconnecting Roots. Visit ReconnectingRoots.com to watch the full episodes or to check out our music and podcast. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe so we can keep making more. Thanks for watching.